Monopolists are single suppliers to a market with no competitors. Supernormal profits are shown as area P, A, B, C. Losses are also possible due to excessive average costs. Losses are the area K, L, A, P. Different pricing strategies are possible. A is the price to maximize profits as marginal cost equals marginal revenue. K is the price to maximize revenue as marginal revenue is zero. L is the price to maximize sales, which occurs when the firm sells as much as it can without making a loss. The profit maximizing monopolist will operate at output Q and price P. So why is this a problem? Well, if the industry is perfectly competitive, equilibrium would be at point K, with welfare at maximum. Welfare is the sum of the industry's consumer and producer surplus. But, if monopolized, demand becomes the average revenue curve and supply becomes the marginal cost curve. Here, consumer surplus shrinks while producer surplus grows. There is a loss of consumer surplus and a net gain in producer surplus, but it is important to note that there is an overall or net welfare loss of area AKL. So what can be done? Options range from opening up the market to competition, price capping, imposing regulations, deregulating if the monopoly is state controlled, and even nationalisation where the state takes over ownership and control. In the UK, energy companies have been price capped, and although not pure monopolies, they have a large degree of monopoly power. For a regulator, deciding the level of the cap is difficult and setting it too high can force the firm into making losses. In more general terms, regulators can suffer from what is called regulatory capture, where those entrusted to regulate may, perhaps unwittingly, take the side of those it should be regulating. Natural monopolies face large and continuous economies of scale. They are characterized by high fixed costs of supply, including large-scale infrastructure such as cables, pipelines, and networks. If unregulated, they can make excessive supernormal profits, but because they often supply essential public utilities such as water and electricity, they may operate against the public's interest. So what can be done? One problem of intervention is to avoid duplicating the infrastructure, so opening up to competition is costly and wasteful. It is possible to have the ownership and maintenance of the infrastructure controlled separately from the operating companies, as often happens in the case of railways, gas, and electricity supply. Infrastructure could be owned by a private operator or come under public ownership or public control. However, this can create conflicts of objectives between parts of the industry. For example, operating companies may focus on maximizing returns for shareholders, while the owners of the infrastructure may be more concerned with safety. In the UK, energy companies have been price capped, and although not pure monopolies, they have a large degree of monopoly power. For a regulator, deciding the level of the cap is difficult and setting it too high can force the firm into making losses. Price discrimination is a strategy which attempts to increase profits by charging different prices for the same product. First degree discrimination means charging a different price for every good sold. At price P4, consumer surplus is the whole area under the price line. If the firm discriminates with two new prices, P3 and P2, the firm gains consumer surplus which it converts into producer surplus. In this way, producer surplus can be increased as more prices are added, but it is very difficult to apply in practice. Second degree discrimination means charging different prices for different quantities, so unit prices for single products will be higher than those contained in multipacks. Third degree discrimination is the most common type and occurs when different submarkets can be identified. Once identified, each submarket must have a different PED. When PED is low and inelastic, profit maximizing price is high. But when PED is high and elastic, profit maximizing price is much lower. When submarkets can be kept apart, say through time or place, discrimination is possible, as with peak time travel tickets, which are sold at higher prices than off peak tickets. In this example, 
Profits from separating a market into an inelastic sub-market and an elastic one are greater than from combining the market. For convenience, MC is assumed constant and equal to AC. Profit maximization in each market is where the MR for each sub-market equals the common MC. Here, supernormal profits X plus Y are greater than Z, so price discrimination is beneficial.